I had dreamed about going to the Olympics as a kid. Um, and that was because I liked running and the Olympics is the pinnacle of sport for running. I think I imagined myself more in the 100 meter dash than in the marathon. But when I got back from the Olympics, one of the first things that I remember after meeting with my family, reconnecting with my wife who was 38 weeks pregnant and my kids was being interviewed and the reporter asked me if it was worth it. And it kind of caught me off guard because I realized I didn't know if it was worth it. When I got to Rio, uh, I spent a lot of time in the Olympic Village getting ready for my race. The, the marathon is on the last day of the Olympics, so opening ceremonies, men's marathon. And I woke up the morning of the race to pouring rain. And I remember walking out of the Olympic Village with my coaches and trainers and getting onto the bus and we were like sidestepping puddles. I'd never raced in humidity like that before and I remember realizing the stage that I was on right on the start line. And then the race started and I was running in a pack of 50 guys going five minute miles. And I'd run five minute miles before and I'd run in a pack of 50 guys before, but I'd never run with 50 guys going so fast. And um, the race continued like this for over halfway. We went through halfway in one massive pack up front. And then at mile 15, the guy who ended up winning the race, his name's Elliot Kipchoge, he now holds the world record. He takes off and he goes from running about five minutes a mile to running four and a half minutes a mile. And I kind of move, but I know I can't go that pace. Yeah, you know, my, my goal for the Olympics was to finish in the top 10, but I was probably about in between 15th and 20th at this point because there was a front pack and then a few people that had stretched out behind them and then me. And at about mile 16, I started thinking, I don't know if I can do this. And thoughts flashed through my head like, what happens if I can't finish this race? What happens if I can't even finish the Olympic marathon? What does coach think and what does mom and dad think and wife and kids and what's gonna happen when I go back home? And I was spiraling quickly, you know, and it wasn't until I caught hold on the thought that I didn't know if I could make it to the finish line, but I knew I could make it two more miles to my next water bottle that it gave me First, the, the motivation to stop on that spiral of despair, stop and think, wait, I can run two more miles, so let's run two more miles. When I realized that I could make it to my next water bottle, what that did for me mentally was it took the focus off of the finish line, it took the pressure off of everything external, and it gave me something to focus on that I knew I could achieve. And for the next few miles, that was how I ne negotiated the race. And then eventually it was, I don't know if I can make it to the finish line, but I can catch that guy. And I would catch a guy in front of me and I continued to move up. And I ended up passing 10th place with about a mile and a half to go and continued to move up into the home stretch. I hit the home stretch and I ran as hard as I could all the way to the finish line. And I crossed the finish line in sixth, and uh, some of the media there at the finish line made fun of me for being the most excited sixth place finisher they'd ever seen. But I was excited because I felt like I had just beat myself. I just showed myself what was possible when instead of trying to run, at least mentally, the last 10 miles of the race all at once, I just ran the mile that I was in, and that was all I focused on. And that's been a, a good lesson for my life and has applied to other aspects of my life. And that's what made me realize that the Olympic experience and the sacrifices for it were worth it because I learned something and I became something through the process.